Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbi shrahi sadri wa yassirni amri wa hlul uqdata min lisani yafqahu qawli. Rabbi zidna ilma. The major sin that we're doing today, sisters, na wa alikunna wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, is um, the sin of cursing. Cursing. Um, Cursing in the sense that you wishing or making dua against somebody. So the Sheikh says, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu reported Allah's Messenger وسلم, as saying, Reviling a Muslim is sinfulness, and fighting with him is kufr, unbelief. So Bukhari and Muslim. Uh, there's another hadith of Rasulullah, very short in Arabic. Is la'nul mu'minu ka Cursing a believer is similar to killing him. Cursing a believer is like killing him. Okay? And this hadith is in Bukhari. Abu Darda radiallahu anhu reported Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as saying, translation, men given to cursing or well, the men who curse a lot, will not be intercessors or witnesses on the day of resurrection. And that is in Muslim. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported Allah's Messenger وسلم, as saying, it is not fitting for a truthful person to be given to cursing. And that hadith is in Muslim. The Prophet وسلم, is reported to have said, a believer is not given to taunting or cursing others, nor is he shameless and foul mouth. So it has both. It has like the cursing, like when you make dua against someone, but also being foul mouth, like um, bad words, you know, having bad words coming out of your mouth, that, that kind of cursing. Abu Darda radiallahu anhu reported Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as saying, when a servant of Allah curses anything, the curse, the curse goes up to heaven, but the gates of heaven are locked against it. So, because the you know, like in this case, it's talking about making dua against somebody, right? So this is going all of the way up to the heaven, but the gates of heaven are locked; they will not open to to that curse. Then the curse comes down to the earth, where its gates are locked against it. So it comes back down to the earth, the gates are locked. And then it goes right and left. And if it doesn't find a way to enter, it returns to the one who was cursed. It returns to the one who was cursed. If the, if the person who was cursed deserves the curse, then it will stay with him. Okay? So if, the let's say you cursed uh, so and so. That curse goes to heaven, the door is locked, comes back down to the dunya, the door is locked, it goes right, left, and if it does not find a way, if it does not find a way to enter, it goes back to so and so. If so and so deserve the curse, it will stay with him. But if so and so is innocent, it will return to the one who did the curse. Okay, so that is the hadith in Abu Dawood and Ahmed. The Prophet وسلم, has punished the woman who cursed her camel by taking it away. Imran bin Hussein said, while the Prophet وسلم, was on a journey, there was a woman of the Ansar riding on the camel and who being annoyed by the camel's noise, started cursing it. The Prophet وسلم, heard that and said, take away everything it carries and release it. Because it, because it has been cursed. <clears throat> SubhanAllah. Imran said, it is as though I still see the camel in my mind's eye, wandering about among people with no one to bother it. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu reported Allah's Messenger as saying, the most excessive type of a riba is to elongate against the honor of your Muslim brother. So here it says Amru bin Qais 
said, if a man mounts his animal, the animal will say, O oh Allah, make him kind and friendly to me. But if he curses it, it will say, let the curse of Allah Almighty befall the one of us who more disobeys Allah and his messengers. So the animal is saying, Ya Allah, let the curse, let your curse fall on the one among us, meaning either the animal or the one riding the animal who disobeys Allah and his messengers the, more, the most, right? It's probably going to be the human. Um, SubhanAllah. So yeah, so we don't want to be, uh, we don't want to curse. Now the, the sheikh says there are some cases where uh, it is allowed to curse. So um, it says here, Allah's Most High says, Behold, Allah's curse rests on the wrongdoers. This is in Surah al Hud, um, Ayah 18. And also in Surah Al Imran, then let us plead and place Allah's curse upon the liars. Allah's messengers said, Allah has cursed the one who takes riba, who gives it, who witnesses it, and who writes it. Meaning the one who writes the contract for the riba, the one who witnesses it, the one who gives uh, riba, and the one who takes riba. Allah saves us from all of that. Allahumma amin. And it says here, um, Allah has cursed the woman who gives her hair for making a wig and the one who uses it, the tattooer and the one who is tattooed, the one who shortens teeth and the one whose teeth are shortened. You know, I know in some cultures, they shorten the teeth for beautification and this is not halal in Islam. So again, Allah has cursed the woman who gives her hair for making a wig and the one who uses it. So the, the one who uses the wig, the one who gives her hair for the wig, the tattooer and the one who is tattooed, the one who shortens teeth and, and the one whose teeth are shortened. I know this tattoo thing is actually in Christianity as well and in, uh, in Judaism. It's haram in all of these books, in all of these three religions. <sighs> so anyway, it says here, Cursed be the woman who will, who shave their heads, or who tear their garments when mourning. So, you know, in some culture, when somebody passes away, she will be welling, throwing herself on the floor, welling, shaving her head, or tearing her clothes, right? So this, uh, it says the woman, that woman is cursed. Another one says, Allah has cursed the one who curses his or her parents and the one who abuses his or her mother. Another hadith says, Allah has cursed the one who misleads a blind man from the right way. Allah has cursed the one who has sexual intercourse with an animal. Allah has also cursed the one who does what the people of Lut did, meaning homosexuality. So the Prophet ﷺ cursed the following types of people. Like we said, the professional mourners, and he, it says here usually it's women. A long list, so listen very carefully. There's a long list here of people that uh, Rasulullah ﷺ uh, has cursed. The leader of a nation who is hated by his people, he's being cursed. The wife who passes the night while her husband is angry with her, that's a curse. The one who hears in the Azan, come to prayer, come to success, but he does not respond to it. The one who slaughters an animal in the name of anyone other than Allah. The one who steals, the thief. The one who insults the companions of the Prophet, The effeminate men and the mascul masculinized women. The men who imitate women and women who imitate men. The men who put on women's clothing and the women who put on men's clothing. I'm so glad I changed my wardrobe. The one who defecates on the roadway. Oh, we did this with Imam Ahmed in, in a class about, you know, like um, the rights of the, of the path. 
So the one who defecates on the road on the roadway is being cursed. The one who incites a wife against her husband or a slave against his master. So all those people who are giving bad advices, bad advice to you know their friends, so that their their friends end up fighting their husband. So they're being cursed. The one who has sexual intercourse with a menstruating woman is being cursed. The one who threatens his Muslim brother with a weapon. The one who dissuades people from paying zakat. So you discouraging people from paying zakat. That person is being cursed. The one who ascribes his paternity to anyone other than his father. The one who brands an animal at its face. The one who intercedes or asks for intercession of Allah's uh, had mandatory punishment when the case is considered before the judge. The wife who goes out of her house without her husband's permission. The passive and active partners in homosexuality. The one who drinks khamar, alcohol, the one who serves khamar, the one for whom it is produced, the one who sells it, the one who buys it, the one for whom it is carried, and the one who is fed from its price. So it has a whole bunch of categories here, right? So you drink it, even if you don't drink it, if you serve it, even if you don't serve it, if you produce it, even if you don't produce it, if you sell it, and if you don't sell it, if you buy it, and um, if you carry it, and if you are fed from its price, meaning you, maybe your family member is selling it and you're eating out of, from that money and your family is eating from that money. Now let's save us from all of that. The one who denies Allah's decree, you deny the qadr of Allah, the one who adds to Allah's book. You say, oh, Allah says this in the Quran. Never said it. The one who takes power by force in order to exalt those whom Allah has made low and to humble those whom Allah has honored. The one who makes it permissible to fight in Mecca and Allah's haram. And the one who abandons the Prophet's sunnah. The one who commits adultery with his neighbor's wife. The one who marries a woman and her daughter as co-wives, subhanAllah. The one who masturbates with his hand. The one who gives bribes, who takes bribes, and who arranges for a bribe. There's so much of that going on in Africa, right? SubhanAllah. So you can't, like, you can't say, oh, let me give you a little bit of money, then you can let me go through custom. Or, you know, bribe is, is haram in Islam. We have to be careful. It's so much part of our culture in Africa, though, that sometimes we may not even realize we're doing something haram. So we have to be very careful with bribing. The one who conceals religious knowledge, the one who hoards, the one who does not render help to a Muslim brother's to a Muslim brother who is in difficulties. The merciless ruler, the men and women who choose celibacy, that is to say those who declare they will never marry and they will devote their lives to worship. Meaning they say, oh, I will never marry. It's different if they just don't have, they didn't have anybody to marry them or they didn't find anybody to marry. But to say, I am not going to marry, I'm just going to worship. So that is not good. And so the chef says, we ask Allah's protection from the curse of Allah and his messenger. SubhanAllah. So it says it's forbidden, it's haram to curse a Muslim that is, you know, a, a good Muslim. But it is permissible to curse the people who possess evil characteristic in a general fashion. You know, not specifically, but generally. Like you could say, may Allah curse the oppressors. You know, instead of saying, may Allah curse so and so. And you can say, may Allah curse all those who oppress people. May Allah, uh, may Allah curse be on the unbelievers. 
may Allah curse the evil doer. You could do that in a general fashion, but not individually, right? So, um, so it says in um, Al Ghazali, it say, is reported to have said, to curse is to believe that a person is deprived from Allah's mercy. However, we do not know whether a person will die as an unbeliever or an evildoer. So that's why it's better not to curse an individual, but just to make it general. Okay, and um, it says, however, in the course of giving a sincere advice or correcting a mistake during training or teaching, it is permissible to say shame on you. It, it, that, that one is permissible. As long as it, it does not constitute a lie or slandering. The, the purpose of doing that is just scolding and when you train or teach someone or to focus the attention of the students and Allah knows best. Okay, so this is the chapter on missing. Okay, the chapter 45 is on, it's very short, so I can do this one here also, is on betrayal and breaking contract. Do I have any question about 44 before we go to 45? Do I have any questions about 44? Any questions about 44? Um, so let me just put chapter 45 is betrayal and breaking contracts. Uh, it says here, Allah Most High says in Surah al Isra, fulfill the covenant and the covenant will be checked into. So that's translation, ayah 34. Surah al Isra, ayah 34. So 17. Uh, ayah 34. As the judge, uh, the judge said, whatever Allah has commanded or prohibited constitutes the covenant. So what is the covenant? Is whatever Allah has said, you know, do or don't do. So you don't want to break that covenant. You want to fulfill it. And because it's going to be, you're going to be asked about it. Uh, we are going to be asked about it. Allah Most High says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, you who believe fulfill your contract. Ibn Abbas, anhu, he explained the meaning of covenant. He says, this is what Allah has made halal, or what Allah has made haram, what he made obligatory, and the punishment he prescribed in the Quran. Contracts, I mean, contracts include what Allah has enjoined upon you in the Quran, and to fulfill them means to obey what he has commanded, and to refrain from what he has prohibited. Contracts also include those contracts which are made uh, among yourselves, right? So the Prophet ﷺ said, four characteristics make anyone who possesses them a hypocrite. And the one who possesses one of them possesses a characteristic of hypocrisy until he abandons it. So what are they? When the person is trusted, he betrayed that trust. When he speaks, he lies. When he makes a covenant, he breaks it. And when he goes to law, he deviates from the truth. So these are the four characteristics. We have to be careful. They are characteristic of hypocrisy, right? So, um, you know, make breaking covenants is one of the characteristics of hypocrisy. Uh, save us. So when you say you're gonna do something, sisters, we have to like, you know, be careful. If you say if you say you're gonna do something and you know you can't do it, then you have to let the person know that so you cannot just be like, oh yeah, 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 I got you, and then they don't hear from you anymore. Allah's Messenger Sallallahu said, Allah Most High says there are three types of persons whose adversary I myself will be on the day of resurrection. Save us. The one who gives a promise of protection to another and then he betrays him. The one who sells a free person and consumes the price of the sale. And the one who employs a workman and he does not pay him his full wages when he finishes his work. 
and that is in Hadith Bukhari. Is in Bukhari. Um, it says here, Abdullah ibn Umar anhu reported that Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, the one who refrains his obedience to a leader after declaring it will meet Allah on the day of resurrection without any excuse to offer to him. And the one who dies without having sworn allegiance to a leader will die as the people of pre-Islamic period used to die. Hmm. So the, now he's going to quote uh, another hadith, very powerful hadith. It says, Ibn Umar anhu reported Allah's Messenger as saying, let the one who desires to be rescued from the fire, to be saved from the fire, and to enter Jannah, face his end while he believes in Allah and the last day. May Allah give all, all of us a good end. And deal with others as he wishes to be dealt with, with the one, uh, yeah, okay, let me say that again. And deal with others as he wishes to be dealt with, the one who swears allegiance to a leader and the leader committed to him, the power of his hand and the sincerity of heart. Let him obey that leader as much as he can. If after that, another one contests the authority of the leader, strike off his head. So basically, have loyalty. Be loyal, right? And deal with people the way you want to be dealt with and face your ends with um, la ilaha illallah, while you believe in Allah and the last day. So these people, if they do that, they will be rescued from the fire and enter Jannah. May Allah make us among those who enter Jannah. Allahumma Ooh, 46. Hmm. Let me see if I, I should start it or I should wait for next time. 46 is about believing in fortune tellers and astrologers. Yeah, we'll do that next time, inshallah. Well, it's only two pages. Let's see. Yeah, we can do it, inshallah. That way we do three. So chapter 46, believing in fortune tellers and astrologers. SubhanAllah. Allah Most High says in Surah Isra again, Ayah 36, do not, translation says, do not pursue something you have no knowledge about. The hearing, the eyesight, and the vital organs will be all be questioned concerning it. In explaining this, um, do not pursue. Al-Kalbi said, do not say anything you have no knowledge about. Qatada said, do not say I heard when you did not hear. Nor do, do nor say I saw when you did not see, nor say I knew when you did not know. In explaining the second part of this verse, Ibn Abbas said Allah will ask his servant how they use their ears, sight, and mind, and it is a warning that one should not engage in seeing what is prohibited, nor in listening to what is forbidden, nor, nor in desiring what is not permissible in Allah's best. Then he says, Allah Most High says in Surah Jinn, Ayah 26 and 27, Knower of the unseen, he never discloses his unseen to anyone except for some messenger whom he approves of. So this is a huge dalil for us to know that, you know, fortune tellers and all these people, they can't do anything. They don't really have knowledge, they don't have knowledge of the unseen. Ibn al jawzi said, knower of the unseen is Allah Almighty, the one and the unique. There is no one to share his dominion. And he, he does not disclose any part of his unseen except for some messenger he approves of because um, the truthfulness of messenger is that they inform about the unseen. It also implies that the fortune tellers and astrologers are liars. And those who believe in them are unbelievers. May Allah save us. Allah's Messenger Sallallahu said, The one who goes to a psychic or a fortune teller, he has rejected what has been revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Zaid bin Khalid al-Jahni related the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi led the morning prayer for us. It had already rained during the night. After he has finished the prayer, 
he turned toward the people and said, Do you know what your Lord has said? They replied, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, This morning, some of my servants woke up believing in me and others denying me. The one who said, A rain on us by the grace and mercy of Allah is a believer in me. But the one who said, It rained on us due to the influence of such and such a star has denied me and believed in the star. SubhanAllah. Bukhari and Muslim. Scholars said, if a Muslim says it rained because of a storm, and he believes that the storm was the element in producing the rain, he becomes an unbeliever. Very serious. Well, if he meant that the storm was a sign and instrument of Allah for bringing rain, then he does, he does not disbelieve. Allah's Messenger said, if anyone goes to a psychic and believes what he says, his prayer will not be accepted for 40 days. That's in Muslim. Aisha radiallahu anha reported that when some people ask Allah's Messenger about soothsayer, he replied, they know nothing. They know nothing. He was told, oh, Messenger of Allah, they make predictions which sometimes come true. And you know, some people say that. I say, well, you know, sometimes they tell you some things that come true. So the same, the same thing was asked or told to Rasulullah. They said to Rasulullah, Oh, Messenger of Allah, they make predictions which sometimes come true. He replied to them, He said, That word of truth which the jinn hears by chance and then whispers into the ear, ears of his client, the soothsayer, will be mixed with a hundred lies and reported. SubhanAllah. So he, he heard that by chance. And so he's going to mix that one piece of truth with lies. Yeah, with a hundred lies. Aisha anha said that she heard the Prophet Islam said, the angels come down over the cloud telling about something that has been decreed in heaven. And shaitan will steal. He will listen and he will hear parts of it, which he then inspires to the soothsayers, and those mix, with, mix it with a hundred falsehood from themselves. And this is in Bukhari. In another hadith, it says, consulting our oracles, drawing lines, and observing the direction of the flight of birds to deduce omens from them are all pagan practices. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, anhu reported Allah's Messenger as saying, if someone acquires a piece of knowledge from the stars, he will have acquired a part of magic. Ali bin Abu Talib radiallahu anhu uh, said, the soothsayer is a magician and the magician is an unbeliever. So this is the end of chapter 46. So we did three chapters today, alhamdulillah. So chapter 46 is believing in fortune tellers, and astrologers. We have Muslims checking their horoscopes without any issue. That give us knowledge and guidance. No more Any questions, sisters? Otherwise, we're gonna close here. So we're gonna have questions for the trivia, inshallah, sometime this week. And we have to answer these questions before the next class, inshallah. All right, may Allah benefit us. May Allah protect us from cursing, from betraying our contracts, uh, and from believing in fortune tellers and astrologers. May he uh, preserve our iman and our ikhlas. May he give all of us a good end upon la ilaha illallah. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Wa nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayh. Assalamu alaikum.